This week, we begin the week called Holy Week. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday are the most holy and important nights for us. Thursday is called Holy Thursday, and we celebrate the amazing gift of the Eucharist and of our call. It's one of my favorite nights of the year. Come join us if you can, online, in person, 7 o'clock. It includes a washing of the feet. We put a single chair and symbolically wash a few people's feet. I say a word about these people as Father Leo washes their feet. One of the great reminders is that behind every face is a story. This is us. Then at the end of the Mass, we'll process over to the Blessed Sacrament. We do Father Darling Hall with the Blessed Sacrament and remain until midnight to watch and pray with Jesus for those who would like or to come back and visit. Special encouragement for all of our boys and girls and their families preparing for First Communion. It's really a great night. On Good Friday, we have two things. At 3 o'clock, I'll lead a version of the stations that I wrote. We'll live stream that as well. I really like it. I have a couple of kids helping take leadership roles. And at 7 o'clock, Father Leo will lead the main Good Friday service, which includes the proclamation of the Passion and the veneration of the cross. On Holy Saturday, we'll celebrate our main Easter Mass, the Easter Vigil, which will start at 7.30. We have some readings beforehand in, in the dark as we gather. It includes the lighting of the Easter fire and the passing of the fire with our congregational candles, and plus the baptism and reception of the newest members of our faith. If you've never seen an adult baptized by immersion, you won't forget it. And we certainly encourage you to join us. Um, and we, we do pray for those folks doing this all over the world, as well as for the seven men and women who will be baptized here by immersion, and the 13 others who are joining us through profession of faith and confirmation and First Communion. It's a wonderful night. And yes, it does count for Sunday. More accurately, Sunday counts for it. Then on Easter Sunday, we have our regular Sunday schedule of Masses at 7.30, 9.30, 11.30. We're going to have some please help with traffic and, and crowds. And we make Father Darling Hall beautiful and comfortable where we have six screens to live feed. So if we have overflow crowds, fairly likely, at least at the 9.30 and perhaps at the others, that um, people can still be comfortable, receive communion there, see and hear and pray. And for, for those who won't be able to join us either physically or online, well, can you be with us in spirit? And for everyone whose Easter is touched with some sadness or heartache or struggle, you know, maybe the, an empty place at table or some other loss, I hope that Easter helps deepen a sense for you that you're not alone. And, and please know that we love you because we do. Now for this weekend, Palm Sunday. What, what you're going to hear now are the words that I'm going to use to introduce the Passion. We record this on Friday for all the reasons it's helpful. We will um, record the Passion in my introduction. We'll live stream it at the 5 o'clock Mass, which is, you can join us. It will then be available on our YouTube channel. We'll also record the, this kind of preamble message to listen to the Gospel, the Passion, as well as the Passion itself. At the 9.30 Mass, I'll lead the 5 and 9.30, and we'll also We'll put those both, you know, on our web page, in our Facebook page, so you can see them that way as well. The, uh, the Passion is a phenomenal, phenomenal story. What I'll do, what we'll do, is actually put some images as we watch it so that people can... Um, 
kind of maybe perhaps hear it a little bit differently than before. The parts that people say out loud will put the words there so people can join in. You know, it's my words in just a moment are just to try to help us hear it a little bit better. You know, we'll, we'll hear that story of that meal where Jesus gathered with his friends on the night before he died, broke bread, shared it with them, washed their feet. How they went to the garden to pray afterwards, where he was betrayed and handed over and unjustly condemned. And then how he was beaten and mocked and spit upon and finally carried his cross on that beautiful, painful, lonely journey. So we invite you to journey with us as we journey with him on these days. And so before I do those introductory remarks, here is the gospel question, the gospel this time being the passion. What do we learn about God today in this passion in a way that we hear perhaps more deeply than ever before. And secondly, what do you think we can learn about how we are ourselves like God today? Thanks for joining. In the movie Good Will Hunting, a man named Will Hunting, played by a young Matt Damon, is a 20-year-old genius who works as a janitor at MIT. He was severely abused as a child and has been in trouble with the law ever since. When Will finally agrees to get counseling to help keep him out of jail. He meets a therapist named Sean, played by Robin Williams. Their relationship is rocky, but Sean doesn't back down because he realizes this kid, this brilliant kid, is throwing his life away. In one interchange, Sean offers this challenge to Will speaking from the pain of his own life, from what he had experienced himself. And he says, if I asked you about war, you'd probably throw Shakespeare at me, you know, once more into the, brief, the breach, dear friends. But you've never been near one. You've never held your best friend's head in your lap. Watch him gasp his last breath, looking to you for help. If I'd ask you about love, you'd probably quote me a sonnet. But you've never looked at a woman and been totally vulnerable, known someone who could level you with her eyes, feeling like God put an angel on earth just for you. And you wouldn't know what it's like to have that love for her be there forever through anything, through cancer. And you wouldn't know about sleeping, sitting up in the hospital room for two months, holding her hand because the doctors could see in your eyes that the terms visiting hours don't apply to you. You don't know about real loss because it only occurs when you've loved something more than yourself. Real loss only occurs when you loved something more than yourself. In just a moment, in the proclamation of what we call the passion, we get a stunning glimpse of God and see that that is how God loves us. Jesus loves us more than he loves his own life. Now, we will hear that there is nothing theoretical about this love. This is not some 
intellectual concept. This is not some romantic feeling. They have their place. No, this is what love really is. This is what love does. And if we hear the story rightly, we can never again think of God as aloof, as separate from us, as unable to understand what it is like to be us. For this is the story of the incredible pain in the heart of God that only occurs from loving something more than oneself. To Jesus, we are worth his life. And now, all these years later, so many of these same elements of the passion are unfolding right before our eyes. That same ugly hatred that Jesus faced also rears its head now in some awful ways. And that amazing love that shone through Jesus in the midst of his suffering, it also shines now through ordinary people whose goodness blesses this world in so many ways. That gut-wrenching heartache and letting go known by Mary and the disciples at the foot of the cross is being played out in thousands of letting goes. Battlefields, cemeteries, bedsides, and other goodbyes, all the places of pain that only occurs when you've loved something more than yourself. You've seen it too, haven't you? Every day an 85-year-old man visits his wife of 60 years in the memory care unit. She has dementia. He just sits with her holds her hand, loves her, and usually cries as he leaves. The mom who watches with sadness as her child with special needs waits for the bus in the morning, ignored by the other boys and girls as they go on with their, their lives. Exhausted first responders, medical professionals, counselors, friends will miss Easter with their families because they care for people suffering at some time of loss or tragedy. The countless stories of love and letting go the unfolding of the passion around the world and in our own lives. You've known that in your own heart as well, haven't you? Some 2,000 years ago, the passion of Jesus Christ changed forever our understanding of God. That passion is being lived today in our very midst. It is ultimately the story of the incredible pain in the heart of God that only comes from loving something more than oneself. After the passion is proclaimed, there'll be some time for quiet prayer, during that time, there might be something you'd want to say to God about what surfaced in you. And so say it, say it. Or maybe there might be something God would want to say to you. If so, hear it. In the passion we hear proclaimed this weekend, We hear the very love of God alive in our midst, even now.